Today we are gonna go to at least three Goodwills and see what we can find. Cause when it's all over, it's gonna be in your court. I'm traveling with students. Uh, they are rehearsing all day today and tomorrow. And so we're here for two nights in a town about an hour and a half away from uh, where we live. And while they're rehearsing, I'm going thrifting and I am at Goodwill stop number one. Here it is. Well, you can't really see it. There it is. And we're gonna see what goodies I can find. Let's go. for thrifting with me. If you've watched any of my thrift with me videos, you know that I like to start in the shoe section and I found a really great pair of Tevas that you will see at the end of the video for the thrift haul because I will have a thrift haul of everything that I pick up, but these are great because they have Gore-Tex and a Vibram sole, so into my cart they went. And then I found another pair of hiking boots by the brand LL Bean. Pretty sure that both of these boots were from the same owner because they were both in a men's size 11, so these went into the cart as well because those were a great find. I also wanted to show how there were a lot of items at this Goodwill that seemed to be from Target. I know there are Goodwills out there that will do big bulk buys with places like Target at the end of the season to help Target get rid of some of the stuff that they weren't able to sell but they need to move out because they're bringing in new stuff. You're seeing it also in the home goods section, a lot of stuff that is brand new, very clearly from Target and Goodwill is selling it at a discounted price. I have a great story later about these fry boots that you see in my cart, but holy cow, that little rack right there, I ran to when they first pulled it out and got some great stuff. This is a pair of super cute Nikes that I got for my son because he is gonna need some new sneakers very, very soon and these are the size that he's gonna be wearing. This is an example of a piece that I left behind, even though it's a brand that I love because it was too simple of a piece and comps were not all that great. But here is one of the only clothing pieces that I did pick up at this Goodwill. It is kind of a crazy geometric sweater, very similar to the styles that I was getting in my fleek box that I've talked about many times in what sold videos because many pieces from that fleet box were selling well. It's just by the brand Claybrook, but I went ahead and picked it up and left this Morona one behind because Morona is just a Target brand and I knew that it wasn't vintage. This is a view of a rack. I went through every single item on this rack and I wanted to show you that I didn't end up picking up a single thing, nor did I pick up these Adriana Goldschmidt jeans, even though I would have picked them up for sure, you know, maybe four years ago, but they were asking a little too much for what I'd be able to get for them. Do I look disheveled? <laughs> so I spent a little over an hour at that thrift store. I think I only got like five or six things. I think for the most part, they're pretty good things. So that's good. But um, I don't know. I just wasn't feeling it. I could tell there wasn't a lot of, you know, good stuff to be found. It was kind of picked over. But we're going to try a couple other Goodwills. And let's see, I spent about $40. So not bad. And I will see you at the next Goodwill. Let's go. I am at Goodwill number two. I'm hoping I can find some home goods stuff. I'm also hoping I can find more items, like more quantity um, compared to the last Goodwill that I went to. But you know, the goal really is quality over quantity. So if I only come out with a handful of things that are really good, I mean, that's better than finding a ton of stuff. So let me see if I can show you the, you can't, you can't see the Goodwill sign. You can see the blue though, but this, I promise you, is Goodwill number two. Yeah, let's go. Surprise, surprise, I'm in the shoe section and I'm gonna start by showing some shoes that I left behind. Abeo is a really great brand, great comfort brand, but these were pretty beat up. So I did leave those behind due to just how much wear there was. Sam Edelman is also a pretty decent brand, but to be honest, I tend to leave behind most of it. This I believe was Bear Traps, which I have sold before in the past. I don't really pick it up very often. And in general, the shoes at this particular Goodwill, from what I remember, just was not amazing. However, I did find some clothing pieces, which I had been struggling to find before, including this something navy denim jacket. I have actually never picked up something navy before, so that was really exciting. But this no brand, I mean the brand is Blair, but this cat jacket is probably my favorite find of the day. So many of you have asked me about it. It is going to be in in my February drop on February 17th at three o'clock. So check out my website then. 
this Talbot's jacket, new with tags. I thought it was amazing, but they were asking $40, so I had to leave it behind. And then here I am with my pretty full cart, just kind of going through everything and picking out what I'm gonna keep, what I'm actually gonna take home with me, and what I'm gonna leave behind. As you can see, I found a really sunny spot near a ton of windows to do my sorting because you want natural light to help you find any flaws, especially stains and stuff like that as you're sorting through your car. And so I just wheeled everything over to where the shoes were because that's where the best lighting was. And you can see me looking at all of my goodies to make sure that I picked up good items. I am at the third and final Goodwill. As you can see, I don't have that much time. I only have about an hour, maybe even a little bit less. So we're gonna see what I can find in there to resell. Wish me luck. point you should not be surprised that I am starting in the shoe section. I probably did not need to get these Lucky Brand cork wedges but they were the color of the day so I got them for three dollars and I think I was just excited about seeing some color because it's just been so like boring and drab and neutral lately as far as what I've been listing what I've been picking up so the fun stripes of color I thought was great. Um, lots of shoes actually at this location and I did end up picking up a bunch but as you can see there are a lot of duds that you have to sift through first. A lot of pieces that just really are not in good condition or are not the best brands to resell. These I put in my cart, I do remember actually taking them out later and them not making their way home with me. And that happens when you sort, you look through your cart and you realize that there are things that just are not worth your time. This is a pair of shoes by the brand Vionic. Vionic is one of my very favorite brands to resell for shoes. The sell through rate is great. It sells pretty quickly and it's a brand that a lot of people love because it's a comfort brand. This is a brand that I was not familiar with at all. I believe the brand is Bruno Mogli. It is a brand that is is made in Italy. Um, comps are okay. And I went back and forth for a while of if I should pick them up or not, but you see them go in my cart and you do see them later in my haul as well. So I just kind of set my phone up at the end of a shoe rack here and you see me um, just looking through a bunch of shoes. This is really what it looks like. I usually tend to go rack by rack, row by row. I glance at every single pair of shoes and if the brand is good then I will you know more carefully inspect the shoe to make sure it's in good condition. I just found this pair of Mephisto sneakers that I'm kind of excited about because Mephisto is a really great brand. That goes in the cart and here I am continuing my search for the best shoes to take home and resell. I believe this is a pair of Merrells, but I do end up leaving them behind because lately they have not been selling very well for me. Hi everyone, my name is Becky Park. I'm a part-time reseller, which means when I am not doing my full-time job as a high school choir teacher, I like to go out to places like Goodwill and source items to sell online on reselling platforms like Poshmark, eBay, and even my own website, shopbeckypark.com. So in today's video, I actually visited three Goodwills while out of town with some students. Um, there's a big music conference going on. These are students who made Allstate. So while they're at rehearsal, I went out and thrifted. And because there are a number of Goodwills in this town, I decided that for today's video, I would visit three of them. And also I'm gonna track how much I think all of these items should sell for, and I'll give you that total at the end of the video. Now in that total, I'm just gonna put what I think my gross sales will be. I'm not going to include things like fees because I don't even know where things are gonna sell. I don't know what the fees would be, and I don't actually know how much these things are gonna sell for. This is just my estimate, and I am going to estimate kind of on the lower end of comps. So with all that being said, let's get into the items that I picked up at my first Goodwill. Yo. Well, I'm just gonna start with the best stuff because what happened is I was looking through women's coats. I looked through an entire rack and didn't pull a single thing off of that rack to buy, to resell. But while I was looking through the coats, I saw them bring out a new rack and it wasn't a rack of clothes. It was actually like one of those three tier carts almost and it had like hard goods and stuff but at the bottom like on the bottom cart there were a bunch of shoes a lot of boots and stuff everything had just kind of been thrown in there 
I just like casually sprinted over <laughs> and other people had seen it too. So we were all like kind of honing in on this one car all at the same time. And I immediately went for the shoes and found these. So if you don't know, that is the Fry logo. I found this amazing pair of knee-high brown leather fry boots. They have this detail right here. I feel like I've seen these before at my local consignment store priced at like $500 or something like that. I don't know. Now there are some flaws. They're not brand new. They've been worn and you can see like right here there's a little scratch. There's some wear here. But honestly they are in pretty amazing condition. Um, I don't know yet how much I can price them for because I literally just got back to the hotel room after thrifting and now I'm hauling for you guys and I haven't looked up comps or anything like that, but I will look up comps and let you know right here what kind of the lower end of comps are for these and they were asking $7.99 for these. These had just come out like I said and honestly while it is really nice to find items that are the color of the week at Goodwill because then it's half off. It's also smart, in my opinion, to go after the newest color tags because those items just got out. They haven't been picked over. Those are the newest items to hit Goodwill. And so probably there are a lot more items in that tag that are worth purchasing to resell. So this was such a great find. And in that same cart, I also found this pair of fry boots. So it wasn't just one, it was two pairs of fry boots. So there's the logo again. These I think are actually in better condition. When I looked them over, I didn't remember seeing really any like, okay, there's one little nick right here. There's one spot where like the leather is kind of missing, but there weren't a lot of like scuffs or nicks or anything like that. These were in really, really great condition. I feel like maybe the person just didn't like how these looked on them. I don't know. These are a really soft leather. You can see, um, ugh, I'm like forgetting the word now. I forget what this is called, this kind of leather, this style of leather, but it's super buttery soft. Um, it doesn't have the ability to hold its shape the way that those brown ones do. They're a little bit more like kind of slouchy. And I would guess that it's a little bit harder to get these to fit the way that you want them to perhaps, um, but they're in amazing condition. These are in a size 8B and I will look at the size of those brown ones too. Now these have been worn, even though they're in really great condition, they have been worn, um, but the bottoms still look like they're in great shape and these were $7.99 as well. I'm fairly certain these are also a size eight because I think that both of these came from the same person. Yes, these are a size eight as well. So I'm gonna price these black ones right here for this amount. And I am going to be putting both of these boots in my February drop on my website, Shop Becky Park. If you join my email list down below, I will send you a reminder the week of. You may even get a coupon that you can use while shopping, but definitely make sure that you subscribe to my email list so that you are notified whenever I have information about my monthly drops. Next up, I have a sweater and I picked this up. I was very inspired by a box that I purchased of men's vintage sweaters on an app called Fleek. Um, they sent me some fire vintage sweaters, you know, very like Coogee inspired, very reminiscent of like what Bill Cosby wore on the Cosby show. Um, this isn't as good as most of the sweaters from that box, but I still thought it was pretty cool. It definitely reminds me of the 90s. I think it honestly could be from the 90s. This is mainly made of acrylic, so it's not as good as the wool ones. There is 5% wool in here. It was made in Korea and it's a men's size large. The brand is Claybrook. I don't really even care about the brand when it comes to these kinds of sweaters because I think what matters is just the look, the vibe, the aesthetic, and this definitely screams, again, Bill Cosby. <laughs> so I thought this was really fun and I'm hoping to sell it for this amount. And I had $4.99 into this. All right, so the first place I look every time I go into a thrift store is the shoes section. I just feel like 
Shoes typically, at least in the Goodwills in my area, are not as intimidating of a section because while there could be a lot, there's usually not nearly as many shoes as there are things like shirts and jeans and things of that nature. Sometimes it can be kind of scary and overwhelming to look at all of the tops that are available for women at a thrift store and you just feel defeated before you even start looking and you have to search through so much garbage to find any treasures. With shoes, there's just usually not as many pairs of shoes and so I usually find things a little more quickly. Plus, I feel like the ROI on shoes is much higher than things like tops or basic pants and so I really enjoy looking in the shoe section and finding shoes to resell. So, I found some really great ones at this Goodwill. I don't find this brand very much, but I was super excited to find these. These are Tevas, and not only are they Tevas, but they have Gore-Tex, which is um, a great like waterproof technology. And then also they have a Vibram sole. So, so many things going for these Tevas. And not only that, but they are in amazing condition. You can see there's not a whole lot of wear on these. I don't think that these were used very much. You can see even on the bottom, like were these worn at all? Or were they just tried on at the store? Maybe they were given to someone as a gift, but they never wore them, so they finally just donated them. I don't know, but they only had these priced at $7.99. So I am very excited about selling these. I think they're gonna do really, really well, even especially as we get into like spring break, because I think a lot of families go on spring break trips to places like national parks, they're going hiking, and these would be perfect for that. These are named men's size 11, and I think these are gonna do amazing. I'm gonna put right here how much I think these could sell for. And then the last thing I'll show you from the, oh, there's like a nice little table here that I can set some of the stuff on, cause these are kind of heavy. So this is another pair of boots, kind of similar to the Tevas. These might be from the same person. Let's see, these are in a size 11 as well. I think these came from the same person and this person was over hiking and over outdoor activities. This is by the brand LL Bean, which is a great, brand for outdoor enthusiasts. They do jackets, they do clothing, they do shoes, backpacks, all of the things. So these are great suede upper like ankle hiking boots. They're in a men's size 11. They have Prima Loft in them, 200 grams. So they are gonna keep your feet warm and they have this Tech 2.5 waterproof system. So it's not Gore-Tex, but it'll do. It's definitely great for people who like to be outdoors and go camping and hiking. There is some wear on these. So these have definitely been worn, unlike the Tevas. So you can see like on the back, probably, um, I don't know if you do this, but like when I take my shoes off, I use, this part of the shoe to like pull the other shoe off of my foot. So I think when you do that a lot, you get scuffs and just kind of uh, wear like that on the back of your shoe. But these as well, the bottoms are in great shape. And you can see that I also paid $7.99 for these and I think I can get about this much for them. So all in all, at this particular Goodwill, I paid $40 and nine cents. And I think I'm gonna be able to sell those five items for this amount. And if you wanna see if I succeed in earning that amount of profit, then you'll have to subscribe to my channel for upcoming What Sold videos, where I cover all of the things that sell for me over the span of a week and share with you the profit that I make each week as well. Several days later. All right, so some of these things you may have seen me pick up while at the store, some of them perhaps not. And it's kind of a hodgepodge of all of the different Goodwills that I went to. But we'll go ahead and start with some of the stuff that I got at the very last Goodwill that I visited, um, I found some decent pieces and some decent shoes. And really all I had time to look at here, because I only had like maybe 30 minutes to an hour, less than an hour, but I mainly just looked at shoes and then the home section, as you'll see. I'll show you even the pieces that I got for our new home, even though I won't include that in my total because these I'm not necessarily getting to resell, um, but I didn't have that much time to look at clothes. So I don't think I got any clothes at this particular Goodwill, but let's start off with this amazing pair of Sorel boots. Is it Sorel? Is it Sorel? You guys know how bad I am at pronouncing things correctly, but you can see the logo right there. These are honestly in such amazing condition. They look like they have never been worn. The 
inside is lined with like this fleece lining it's hard to see because of my lighting but the lining is still so soft it's not matted down or anything like that at all i mean even the bottoms look at the bottoms look how great shape they're in um so even though it's kind of past the season of when you want to be picking this kind of stuff up because now people are kind of sick of winter and they're looking for spring clothes spring shoes they're you know already looking at spring trends i did go ahead and pick these up also because they only have these priced at is this right? They had it priced at $5.99. So of course I picked them up. I got such a great deal on them. They are amazing and they're in amazing shape. So I think conservatively, I should be able to sell them for about this amount. And I'm super excited about getting them listed. The next pair of shoes that we'll look at if I can get them out of the bag. So I had never really heard of this brand. They looked nice and the label on the inside made me think that they were nice. So they're a classic pair of pumps. I do like the patent leather toe. I mean, it's a little bit dated of a style, but it's a very classic style. Um, and then you have the patent leather here as well as kind of this like little gold trim. If you can see that they have the gold here as well on the toe. Um, the brand is Bruno Mogli. When I looked it up, comps were honestly all over the place, which is kind of the case with a lot of like higher end brands that are a little bit more obscure. The people who know what they are, sometimes they're willing to pay up for it, but also there just aren't as many people looking for brands like this. So I did look up comps, you know, it's made in Italy. It's a hundred percent leather. These are in a size seven and a half and they're double A, which means that they're pretty narrow. So, you know, we're looking for a pretty specific buyer here. We just keep niching down as far as who this buyer is going to be when you talk about the obscurity of the brand, when you talk about the fact that this person has to have really narrow feet. But they were just so classic. And at $5.99, I thought I would try out the brand and just see how it does. So I'm hoping to get at least this amount for these shoes. We'll see how they do. Next up, I have a brand that I do love to resell. Um, I'm a little bit concerned about these and I'll show you why, but other than my concern, my little concern, I think that this was a pretty good pickup. So, um, a very, another just kind of classic shape when it comes to shoes, it's a nice wedge. It's got this really nice soft leather on the side in like a really neutral and super classic camel color. Um, the brand is the main reason I picked it up. I like the style too, but the brand is Vionic. Vionic is a great comfort wear brand that I've been having a lot of luck with lately. Some Sometimes their pieces will sit for me just kind of depending on the style, but these they wanted $5.99 for as well. And I thought that they were just a really great shoe, great brand, great condition. Um, the few flaws that I saw, there's one little like kind of mark there, some discoloration. There's some mud on this heel, but that'll come off really easily. The weirdest thing to me was there's this um, insole that was put in and the insole is for the brand Vionic. So it's a Vionic insole, but it's like really intense. It creates like a really intense arch. And I don't know if you take this out, if someone could just wear the shoe with what's inside here right now. I feel, I don't know. So I'm gonna, sh you know, take pictures of it with and without the insole. Um, the insole isn't a huge deal though, because people can buy their own insole and honestly very often will once they get shoes, you know, they'll put their own insoles in their insoles that they like um, to make them even more comfortable. But I, I think it's a pretty good pickup, especially for the $5.99 that I paid for them. So I will let you know right here how much I think they can sell for. And this is a good brand to be on the lookout for, especially in the bigger and more classic styles. This was in a size eight and a half. Next up, you know, like I said, people are not really shopping for winter shoes anymore. They're really looking forward to spring. That's the only reason I got these, mainly because of the fact that people are looking for spring wear, but also because this was the color of the week. So these were $5.99. So I actually got them for $3. The brand is Lucky Brand, which some people swear by their shoes, especially their flats. Um, I have had a lot of luck with their flats before as well. These honestly probably aren't going to fetch me that much, but I did really just like the fun pops of color and and they're in amazing condition. I don't know that these have actually been worn out, as you can see from the bottoms of the shoes. They are in a smaller size. Um, they were in like a size, let's see, they're in a size 
six. So smaller size, but I think they're super fun. I think people might be looking for stuff like this for spring break. So I'm hoping that these don't sit in my closet for too long and sell for at least this much. All right, this is, I think I got these at the same Goodwill. So this is a pair of, yeah, this is from the same Goodwill. This is a brand called Mephisto. Mephisto makes comfort wear shoes. So kind of similar to like Dansko. I think they make clogs like Dansko too. I don't remember off the top of my head, but it says runoff in here. I don't know if that's the style of the shoe. Um, it says air jet system, genuine leather. Um, they're a European size seven and a half, women's size 10. I love selling women's size 10. They fly off the shelves for me. These are in like a kind of metallic-y silver color. They're in great shape. They've definitely been worn, but they're in really good shape. They don't have a lot of scuffing or wear on the exteriors. And they only wanted $5.99 for these. And I should be able to sell them for about this much. So this is a great brand to be on the lookout for, especially if you don't have to pay too much for them to begin with. Okay, I have so many more pairs of shoes, but let's get into some clothes and then I'll finish out with some shoes and some hard goods for my home. So at probably the first or second Goodwill that I went to, I did look through their blazers. Blazers is a section that I like to go through oftentimes because you'll see pretty decent brands. I feel like people know, okay, if I'm gonna get a blazer, it should probably be one of good quality. And so you'll find like higher quality pieces there. I feel like compared to if you're looking in like t-shirts or even sweaters, I feel like people are kind of willing to settle on things that are not of the highest quality because they're okay with having a a lot as far as quantity is concerned but with blazers I feel like most people don't have that many blazers in their wardrobe and so they're willing to invest in better pieces um, so I did actually have some decent luck in the blazer section at this particular Goodwill this is one of my favorite brands you guys already know this is Talbot's and this is new with tags although this tag has been ripped in half and they were asking eight dollars and 28 cents for this so I paid that amount because this is made of a hundred percent linen and it's not that old of a piece on the materials tag it tells you the year that the item was released and this was released in October of 2019 which is why I felt like it would be a really good piece to pick up and linen always does so well for me so especially as we're heading into the spring season linen is kind of a no-brainer especially if it's a trusted brand like that and i think i should be able to make about this much for that blazer next up we have a blazer by a brand that I don't know. I'd never heard of it before. And it's kind of funny. So the brand is Robert Talbot. So, you know, it looks a lot like Talbot's at the bottom, but it's Talbot. I stopped because it says made in Italy. I was also intrigued by this label and I could tell that there was wool in the piece. So it is this blue kind of like a sweater jacket more than a blazer, I would say. It's got the buttons on the front though, like the button closures, there's two buttons, and there are these nice large pockets. This was made of, let's see, yeah, this is made of 100% pure new wool, made in Italy, and I did look up the brand while I was inside the store, and comps are what made me decide that I should go ahead and pick them up. I don't remember what the comps are. I'll put some of the general comps here. I do remember they were a little bit all over the place, but I do think that conservatively, I should be able to sell this blazer for this amount. So excited about trying out this new brand. We'll see how it does. And I think that this is something that's gonna go in my February drop. I'm gonna have it on my website. It's a really unique piece. It's a kind of newer, maybe hard to find brand and I think that's the kind of thing that I want on my website. This item was in the jacket section. The brand is Sylvia Collection. Never heard of it but again I picked it up for a few reasons. One it was made in Austria which made me think that this was a vintage piece and I could tell that this had some wool in it too. I also love the look of it. It's just so classic. It's this beautiful green and the buttons are are amazing. Look at these buttons. They kind of look like an old like European coin um, and then they took it and made it into buttons. They're 
they're amazing. Um, so on the button itself, let's see, I don't know. I think there's actually just, I think the words on here are actually in German, but also my eyes are getting so bad and I can't see that well, I feel like, but it's got pockets as well. And let me look at the tag. It is made of pure new wool. So again, 100% wool and the size is not on here, but that's okay. I can, oh, actually there is a size. It says 42. So I just have to figure out what the conversion is there. And also I'll do measurements and stuff. I do measurements on everything, but I think it's especially important to have measurements on vintage pieces because vintage pieces were sized differently than garments from today. And so it's really important that you you know, provide measurements. You can put the size of the vintage garment in the listing as well, but I always put a disclaimer if it's truly vintage, especially for things like pants, like waistlines, the sizing that they use back then just does not correlate to what we use today. And so I always put a disclaimer to people to check out the measurements in the pictures that I take. Um, but they wanted $8.39 for this, and I think I should be able to sell it for about this much. I'm gonna tell you right now, there were not a lot of comps for this brand, but I am really excited to pick up such a unique one of a kind type of piece. And this for sure is going on my website as well. Okay, so we have another piece by <laughs> the brand Talbots. And this is kind of wild. Like it's just a very <laughs> bold color. Like you will stand out in a crowd in this. Um, it's got this like little ruffle detail here. I picked it up for $12.59, which is kind of a lot, but I got it for that price for a number of reasons. One, it is a size large. Two, it is downfilled. So the exterior is polyester and nylon, but it is downfilled, which definitely, in my opinion, raises the value of a piece because it's gonna keep you a lot warmer than other kinds of fillings. Um, and it's from 2017. It's not super old. It's not super new either. And there were a few comps. There were not a lot, but there were a few comps and there were you know, some of these that had sold for $100. So um, I'm hoping to conservatively be able to move it for at least this much. We'll see what happens. And although it's not really the season, it's also not like a super heavy jacket. It's actually very lightweight. So I do think you could take this into the spring as well. Okay. So I showed this on my Instagram stories already. If you're not following me on Instagram, by the way, my handle is at Becky Park on Poshmark. But holy cow. <laughs> I could not leave this behind. So you guys might not know this, but when I had just graduated or maybe it was, maybe it was even my senior year of college, but I had a cat. One of my friends found a cat in the parking lot of the dorm that I had lived in when I was an undergrad. And she was like a vet science major. So she took the cat in, she took care of it. She even took it to the vet and you know, it got all its shots and all that kind of stuff. Um, but they needed someone to take this cat because you can't keep pets in the dorms. So I volunteered to take this cat and I didn't even know I was a cat person, but this cat was so cute. I'll insert a picture of her if I can. Her name was Simba and we kept her even after I got married. But eventually, especially after we had our daughter, we just knew that we were not able to love on this cat the way that it deserved, especially because my job is a choir teacher, especially when I first started teaching, it was just too much. Like I was at work all hours of the day. I was not able to really love on this cat the way that I should. So we actually gave it to my friend and this cat is now living its best life. So to some degree, yes, I am a cat lady, but also I'm super allergic to cats. So at this point in my life, I'm probably never going to have a cat again. That did not stop me, however, from picking up this beauty. Like, oh my gosh. Okay, so it's like, it's got the look of brocade, but it is just all these cats. Just portraits of cats. And it's not like one cat that they just show over and over again. Like, look at the back. I mean, like, look at this. And even like before you realize that it's a cat, like even if you see this from far away, it's just got like a really great bohemian vibe to it. Like from afar, it looks like a Lauren Ralph Lauren Southwestern piece. Um, you know, uh, 
It's so cool. So this is actually by the brand Blair, which I see this brand all the time at the thrift store and I do not ever pick it up because it's whatever. However, this being the vintage goodness that it is and just the amazing print of cats that it has, I had to pick it up. It was $8.39. I did not look for comps in the stores. And to be quite frank with you, I don't care what the comps say. Perhaps if comps show that this thing has been selling for like $100, $200, I'll obviously list it higher. But I should be able to make at least this amount on this. Um, that it that might be me kind of reaching for the stars a little bit. I don't care. It's so cool. And this is definitely going on my website for my February drop because holy cow, it is so good. I just, I cannot even. So very very excited about this one um so excited to photograph it it's so ridiculous but love i have actually never found this brand before i don't remember off the top of my head but i think that this is sold on revolve i think also they have their own website i have a dress by them that i bought on poshmark but the brand is something navy this isn't a size extra small. It is a very expensive brand to begin with when it comes to retail pricing. And it's this great light wash denim jacket. I did look up comps in the store just to make sure because sometimes with like the trendier brands, um, they become pretty saturated. And so the value online actually goes down when it comes to resale. But the comps on this were still pretty good. So I paid $8.39 for this, but I do believe I should be able to get about this much for this item. And it was my first time picking it up. I'm excited to see what happens with it. I'm like a tiny, tiny bit tempted to keep it myself because it is my size. But you know, I'm not a big denim jacket type of person. So there you go. All right, let's go back to shoes actually, because I think that's all we have left. And then we'll look at some home goods and then we're done. So this is kind of similar to those Sorels that I showed you, but this is by the brand Ugg. I found these randomly just kind of buy like furniture. I was going through the furniture section and this was sitting on top of uh, like a dresser. So someone had it in their cart, probably walked around with it and then decided they didn't want them anymore. So these have been worn, although the bottoms still look really great. By the way, these were $5.99, but I believe at this Goodwill green was half off. So I think I got these for $3. So $3, um, these have been worn. You can tell there's like a little bit of creasing and stuff on the exterior and the fur on the inside. You know, we talked about with the Sorrells how the fur felt so soft still. These are a little bit more matted. Like it's not as soft as probably when these were new, but these are in a size eight. It says men's on the tag, but I'm pretty sure it's a women's size eight because the UK size is six and a half. Um, just great slip on shoes. Again, not super the season, but for $3, I'm not going to pass up UGG slip ons. I should be able to get at least this amount for them. So I think that's going to prove to be a very, very good flip. Next up, you guys know if you've been watching my channel that I don't know. I feel very um, insecure about picking up athletic shoes. I just feel like I don't know what to look for. And they all look the same to me, you know, like some people are able to look at athletic shoes and they know exactly like which ones are good, which ones to leave behind. They just don't look exactly the same. And this looks like a pretty basic style of New Balance to me. The only reason I even like took the time to look at comps and all that stuff is because they look almost new. They are in amazing condition. Um, you can see they've been worn outside maybe a couple times, but there's hardly anywhere on these treads. Like these are in very good shape. They were $7.99 and I did look up comps and comps were like good enough to warrant me picking them up for $7.99. These are in a size nine and a half. So I should be able to hopefully move these for this amount and hopefully they'll move quickly. I just feel like I hold on to uh, athletic shoes for way too long. So this is a brand that I love picking up and I'm now seeing a little bit of wear that I didn't notice before. It's not a big deal, but I do have to disclose it. So this is the brand Keen. Keen is one of my favorite brands to pick up for shoes. It's just such a great bread and butter brand. Keen shoes always sell. They sell for a decent amount. And like I said, I just don't hold on to them very often. And it's one of those rare brands that sells well for kids, men's and women's. They were asking $5.99 for these and they are like these lace up 
shoes that you could wear outside while hiking. You could wear them just even to work, I feel like. I don't know. But these, the flaw that I'm noticing is there is just kind of a lot of wear on some of the laces. That's not a huge deal. It's really easy to replace laces if, you know, people want to. And then also in the leather, there's just some like a few like little marks like that. But other than that, these are actually in really, really good shape. They like stapled the tag to the bottom. Do you see that? It's a little unnecessary, but yeah, hopefully I can make at least this amount on those shoes and we'll see how they do. All right. This is another brand that I don't tend to pick up, but I do know that snow boots for men can do really well. And again, I don't think that these were worn. I think that these are brand new. The brand is Columbia, which in my opinion is nowhere near as good as even like the North Face, but especially nowhere near as good as brands like Patagonia or Arcteryx. Um, it's definitely a lower tier outdoor brand. But that being said, when I looked up comps for similar snow boots, um, they were great. And these are new. I mean, these really just have not been worn. They are a little bit smaller in size. They are a men's seven. Mm -hmm. So that's a little bit harder to move because of the size, but I still think that they'll end up doing okay. I should hopefully be able to make at least this much on these boots. So that is everything I got from three different Goodwills. Again, I was on a trip with students. I was in a town that is not my own. I was in a town called Peoria, Illinois, and I was able to pick up all of this stuff even while traveling. The trunk of my car was basically filled to the brim, and I even had to put some stuff just kind of like where the seats go. Let me show you two more items though, and then we'll talk about how much profit I think I should be able to make off of these trips. All right, so I actually got like, I think I got five lamps total on this trip because I have no chill, um, but I'm just gonna show you the two that I got at Goodwills. By the way, if you're watching this and you're thinking to yourself, why in the world is she thrifting when we're supposed to be in a February listing challenge? You're right, but I thrifted these at the end of January. I promise you that I am not out here thrifting in the month of February. When I'm trying to do this February listing challenge and talking about not thrifting anymore, um, this is all stuff from way before and it's stuff that I'm gonna get listed in the month of February. But the first piece that I got, this first lamp, oh, it's so heavy. Um, I got a Goodwill and they were asking, let's see, the tag is still here. They were asking $14.29 on it. I really liked it for its simplicity. I did like the texture on the lamp itself. It kind of looked like concrete almost. It definitely is not concrete. I mean, it's heavy, but it's not as heavy as it would be if it were concrete. Um, I like the shape of it. It's very kind of just classic looking, but in this new home, we need lots and lots of lamps. So I got this one. There are a few marks on it, but hopefully I can just take a washcloth or even a magic eraser to it and it'll be okay. So there is a date on here. It says September 95. It's not like mid-century modern by any means, but I think it's a really cool piece. I do want to trade out this lampshade and maybe put a blue, like a light blue or a gray lampshade on this. Um, but this lampshade is still in pretty decent shape and I would probably just transfer it over to a different lamp that I got. So actually, maybe it would even look good with this lamp, although no one in my family <laughs> likes this lamp except for me. This one, they wanted eleven seventy nine for. I want to say though that this was the color of the week. I don't. I don't even remember at this point. I. I don't know. I just liked it. I. I really like wood. I like like the brass um, bottom. Although I don't think it's real brass. But um, I don't know. And I like the shape of it. I like the height of it. So no one in my family liked it. Maybe it'll just be the lamp that goes like in the guest bedroom <laughs> down in the basement. Um, that's all right. But I need a shade for this. Like I said, maybe I can steal this shade and put it on here if I can get a better shade for this one. I don't know very much about home decor. Like, I don't know that much about like the different materials, the different brands. I don't know how to tell if something is amazing quality or not. I just kind of go by what I like and I try to stay away from things like Target or, you know, things that probably won't last very long. This, I don't know, it seemed 
pretty sturdy. It seemed good. And I did test this one out at the store because I could tell it was a little bit older of a piece and it did turn on. It worked. So I don't know. Maybe you'll see this in my future home at some point and you'll be like, oh, she found a good spot for it. So that is everything that I got at three different Goodwills. I spent a total of this amount thrifting at those three Goodwills, but I think I'm going to be able to turn a profit once you subtract the amount that I spent on everything of this amount. Now this amount does not include any platform fees that I'm going to have to pay or any shipping that I'm going to have to pay for, but it's just the profit that I think I'm going to make once you take out the cost of the items. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you think that's a good amount and let me know down in the comments below what you know about home decor and the kinds of things that I should be looking out for. Again, I know like what I am going for as far as style is concerned. The vibe or like the aesthetic that I'm going for is coastal farmhouse. That's where I landed. That's kind of what I want to do. I don't want to go like super primitive. I don't want to go super just mid-century modern. I don't want, I don't know, but I feel like, I feel like coastal farmhouse is kind of eclectic. You can bring in a lot of different styles, but I want to stay within that general theme. I want to stay within that general color scheme of like lots of blues and whites and like natural colors so that's why i like the wood i'm also like super into brass and i think you can work a little bit of that in um, a lot of like natural materials we'll see we'll see how well i can stick to that theme and i think too like depending on the room i think i can veer off course a little bit but yeah let me know what you know about <laughs> home decor, where I should go for inspiration. My goal though is to decorate this new home with as many secondhand pieces as possible. And that's why I've been scouring, you know, the Goodwills, going to Habitat for Humanity and Re Habitat Restore. I'm um, going to all those kinds of places to see what kind of goodies they have, because not only am I able to find great pieces at a fraction of the price, because, oh my God, God, have you been to Pottery Barn or Crate and Barrel and seen the prices on their furniture? It's crazy. And so I am hoping to get as much as I can secondhand, not only to save money, but also because it's good for the environment. It's good to find pieces that are in great condition still and just need a new home. And oftentimes if you're finding vintage pieces, things that are made of real wood, things that are made of real metal, those pieces are going to outlast the newer production pieces that are just being mass produced and not a lot of thought and care and attention is being put into how those items are made. They're not made of the best materials and therefore they're just not going to last for as long. And rather than feeding that beast, I would rather purchase secondhand items that are well made. Um, I do want to like spend a lot of time on Facebook Marketplace and, you know, uh, places like that too where I can maybe find things locally and pick them up. I've been visiting a lot of like antique stores, antique malls, consignment stores, We'll see how much of this home we can furnish secondhand. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you want to watch more thrift hauls, I do have a ton more in this playlist right here. So you can feel free to binge on those as well. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.